sure that this is all going to, uh, to mean government funding of abortion. Not true. This is all, uh, these are all fabrications that have been put out there in order to discourage people from meeting what I consider to be a, a core ethical and moral obligation. Wow. There are those out there bearing false witness saying that we will fund federal abortions. This was the last sticking point keeping Democrats from ramming this bill through. Pro-life Democrats wouldn't sign on to a bill that federally funded abortions because it's morally wrong, they thought. They were called the Stupak 13 because they were led by Congressman Bart Stupak, an anchor, a mountain, a man you could trust, when he finally sold out to accept the president's word. Why wouldn't you accept the president's word? He could look you in the eye and promise, no, Stupak said, I'm going to go a step further. The president said he would issue an executive order, so now I have it in writing. Now I have his word, I have his handshake, I have everybody seeing him, and I have it in writing. We will not federally fund abortion. Well, here's today's news. The Health and Human Services Department is giving Pennsylvania $160 million to set up a new high-risk insurance pool that will cover any abortion that is legal in the state, end quote. And if that's not enough, let's go to New Mexico. In New Mexico, the new $37 million high-risk pool began enrolling individuals on July 1st. They will start receiving benefits in August, including an elective abortion service. According to the State Insurance Department's website, once a deductible is paid, 80% of the elective abortion is covered. Americans are fair. Americans are good. Americans imagine a... Americans imagine a place where a man is treated with dignity and honor and respect. We'll duke it out, but we play fair. We don't fight dirty. When we talked about health care, everybody in America wanted a health care. We don't want anybody. I challenged them to show me the little tiny children clawing their way into the hospital that couldn't get cancer care. We want people to be well. We want to help the poor. We want to help the sick, the underprivileged. We're not doing that. Not everybody is covered. And now our priority seems to be to make sure the abortion centers are set up and funded right away. Is the ink, Mr. President, even dry on your executive order? What is your word worth, sir? Last month, House Republican leader John Boehner asked President Obama and his HHS director, Kathleen Syllabus, for an update on how the implementation of his executive order to prevent federally funded abortions was going. We haven't received an answer. We haven't received an answer. Well, now we know why. Imagine a time where you could look President of the United States in the eye and believe what he said. I don't know if we've ever had that. I know we had it when George Washington was president. Have we ever had it since then? I choose to believe the answer is yes. With great leaders, yes. The president went on TV and called people like me a liar because I said he won't keep his promise. It's a trick. He called you a liar because you were concerned. And then he picks up the phone. That conversation is a tape recording of him saying people like me and you are bearing false witness. Now, who says bearing false witness? Who says that? That's not common everyday speech. You know why he chose it? Because he was speaking to religious leaders. He has the audacity 
to accuse others of breaking a commandment by breaking a commandment. He cloaks a lie in, his, in a commandment. The only one telling the truth, kind of, in this whole scenario is Nancy Pelosi, who said we had to pass the bill to find out what's in the bill. That's true. Well, we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. What does that even mean? Who would say, who would take a job and say, hey, by the way, I want you to know, here's your contract for employment. You're just going to have to sign it before you figure out what's really in it. Imagine a time, a time of common sense. Does that make any kind of sense to you at all? Well, we're obviously finding out what's in this 2,500-page bill that no one had time to read. A bill that the president promised us, promised us, would not include funding abortions. But it does. Surprise. Now we're passing this bill today. 2,300 pages. This is only part of it. This is part of it and it's really small print. 2,300 page financial reform bill. It's going to look about this big. Do you know what's in it? No, don't worry about it. We got to pass it to find out what's in it. I can tell you that it doesn't inspire confidence when I hear the president thank the two crooks largely responsible for creating the first financial crisis, help draft this thing. This bill is supposed to fix what happened in our financial crisis. And who was it drafted by? Oh, yeah. Barney Frank and Christopher Dodd. These are the guys who helped collapse Fannie and Freddie. They work side by side with community organizing groups like ACORN to give loans to people who didn't qualify for them. Well, good news. Not only have we fixed the pro not fixed the problem or punished the people involved, we've allowed these guys to go in and institutionalize that method in the bill to collapse our economy now. Not just your 401k. They spent 2,400 pages working on this bill that includes now just 20 offices of minority and women inclusion. Just they're here on page 400 and something or other. 20 offices here. Here it is. That will just a government agency that will make sure that the banks that make, uh, make loans make a certain amount of loans to minorities and women. Gosh, that sounds familiar. Oh, yeah, I remember. That's exactly what led to the first financial crisis. Loaning by race, loaning by creed, loaning by anything else other than merit. In fact, the bill is just loaded with measures that have nothing at all to do with the financial crisis, but instead cater to the agendas of labor unions and other Democratic special interest groups. It creates an entire new... Um, um, uh, here it is, a consumer protection agency. That's great. This is on page 295. Um, it will give employment opportunities and funding for democratic and social activist community organizing groups like ACORN. There's a financial stability oversight council. That's established. And this is, the, you know what this one's going to do? This one is great. This one is um, going to make sure that the... Uh, the government has power to punish any company it deems too big to fail. Not just banks. They can also declare if a company is a non-bank financial firm. The distinction is completely arbitrary and made by bureaucrats. Wow, Cass Sunstein, he appears again. The president no longer has to go through that pesky Congress for takeovers or bailouts. Nope. The president and the secretary of the treasury decide, boom, they just do it. Congratulations, Congress. Yet another step closer to complete irrelevance for you. I'm not going to ask you to imagine the future. I'm going to ask you to learn the past. Next.